Hello, huge welcome to you on day six of my Yoga to Support Losing Weight series. I'm delighted you're joining me on this journey. I do hope you're doing well. Um, I'm thinking about in two weeks, two days, I'm going to teach on a yoga holiday in Crete. And um, it's very busy for me because I'm teaching two classes there running it and um, zooming all my classes home. So I'm really quite busy when I'm there, but I always like to try and get half an hour or an hour in the sun. It seems a shame to be in Crete and not enjoy the sunshine at all. So I always try and take a, a little bit of a break and have some time in the sun. And that brings me to, uh, of course, then you strip off in the sun, don't you? And I've got these, I've got two pairs of these brilliant sort of, bottoms as it were so they're like a skirt so you, you've, got, you've got your you've got your sort of trouser bit as it were and then you've got a skirt over it which is great so I've got a pair in black and a pair in blue so they really do cover a multitude of me and um, they're my go-to when I'm going away with when I'm teaching and um, but in order to wear them I, I do need to lose a little bit or else I won't even be brave enough to wear those so uh, the, the, the sort of the pressure's on a little bit for me to lose a bit more between now and then. So uh, it gives me incentive, I guess, which is good. So uh, alongside reporting in with you every day, which is also very important. So I really am quite determined that I lose a little bit of my belly and my bum before I go away so I can feel that I can wear those without being too horrified. So um, yesterday, yeah, good day, fine day. Um, I've been eating really late my first meal, sort of three, even four, one day. Um, but that does mean that by the time I'm really hungry again, it's eight o'clock, seven, eight o'clock, and maybe finish eating at half past eight, even quarter to nine or something, I don't know, um, which is much later than I'd like to eat. So yesterday I didn't eat so late and I thought, okay, be okay with this, don't try and go so late. But if you finish earlier in the evening, you're still gonna have that long gap from the evening to the following day. So when did I eat? It was about half past one I started preparing, so 10 to two, two o'clock. Um, so I had a couple of those vegetable, well actually it's fishless fingers. I know there's probably nothing good in there, but. I, I don't consider them as naughty foods. So I had two fishless fingers and a portion of my homemade rice and veg, which got lots of spices in it and turmeric and ginger and um, all sorts in there. So I had, with lots of vegetables, lots of nice vegetables. So I had the fishless fingers, a portion of veg and rice and two poached eggs. As I've said, I like to try and get two eggs in a day to make sure I get some protein. Um, so that was that at sort of late lunch, brunch. And then later on, so it was a little bit earlier than it has been previous few evenings. So it was around seven, I suppose. So I still would like to get that a bit earlier, but I was out, I was at my sister's. So as soon as I came home, I prepared salad. So I had some leaves, some iceberg lettuce, um, my sprouted lentils, my go-to, lovely tomatoes, olives, and um, half an avocado again and I did have some naughty because I had I've got it in the fridge and I really don't want to waste it so I'm not quite sure what to do so anyway yesterday I had a little bit of my I think it's Wednesday dough with cranberries really tasty uh, so I chopped that up small and sprinkled some of that on so I did have some cheese yesterday first time since I've been filming and for a few days before but I thought it's going to go mouldy soon and I do so hate waste um, mm. having said that I did show you my chocolate bars the other day and they're still sitting in the fridge. I haven't touched those. So it's one thing to waste chocolate, it's another to waste cheese. The chocolate won't go off. So um, so I didn't have a sweet treat yesterday. I didn't have yogurt and maple syrup. So that was good. So I ate twice and apart from the veg, mm, yeah, the fish's fingers and the cheese, not great. Everything else was just really good, good food. So I consider that a, a good day, a reasonable day with the cheese, it has to come down a notch a little bit. So I'm pleased with how it's going. But when I was teaching yesterday morning and I sort of was showing forward fold, I did feel there's a bit less belly there. I, I can tell a lot from, from going into the poses and it did feel there wasn't quite so much belly as I'm coming forward that restricts me. 
So I, I must be losing something. I was tempted to weigh myself this morning before I showered. And I thought, no, go a whole week. So that's another two days time. Um, I was 10 stone on the first day of filming. So I'm gonna wait two days and, and then weigh myself to see what's going on. But I do feel, I do feel I've lost a bit in the belly. But apart from that, apart from weight, I do feel lighter. I feel lighter in myself. I feel I have more energy. So all the crap food must have worked its way out and um, eating less. And I'm also noticing that I can eat less and feel full up, which is great. So the stomach must have shrunk a bit. It doesn't take long for the stomach to shrink. It also doesn't take long for it to expand. So I'm feeling full with less food in me which is good and I, I make sure I stop before I have that really full feeling that sort of heavy uh, too much feeling so I am feeling brighter I'm feeling um, just more en energy I feel lighter and I don't mean in weight because I'm sure there'll be negligible weight difference but I feel lighter in myself which is wonderful so um, I'm really pleased with how it's going and I would love to know how you're doing and uh, please do check in, leave me a comment, let me know how you're doing and uh, how this could help you moving forward, give me ideas of what you'd like and um, yes, so yes, well done us, nothing tastes as good as Slim Feels, nothing tastes as good as Slim Feels. All right, so we're going to do today, yoga-wise, we're gonna do some salutations, which are great all over body workout. Lots of strengthening poses in there and stretching. And if you've done yoga before and you've done different schools of yoga, which is very likely, then your salutations that you're familiar with might be slightly different to mine. Different schools have different little bits and bobs in there. Nothing's right or wrong, it's just different and passed down from different teachers. So, of course, I'll teach the ones that are familiar to me. And uh, if it's not quite the same as you've learned, don't worry about that. Uh, maybe give it a go my way because I will be doing them a lot, a lot of the times through, through these um, sessions. So, it'd be quite nice if you got familiar with the way I do it. But if it feels too alien and, you, and you're really fixed with where you are as in you've been doing a certain salutation for years then do that that's absolutely fine do what feels comfortable for you all right okay so let's come to lay on our back we're going to do some core work first before we come to stand and do salutations all right so come to lay down on your back and have a few nice deep settling breaths So just sinking into your mat, let the ground support you and then centering and settling, looking to drop all that busyness and be with your breath. So have a nice deep inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And then hug your knees into your chest, keeping your breath nice and smooth and relaxed. And we're going to circle the knees. Giving your lower back a nice massage. change direction and stay at center each exhale squeeze your knees in towards you inhale release away slightly to get that nice movement with your breath exhale squeezing in inhale release And then we'll go into our core exercise where we exhale and squeeze in like we've just been doing. Inhale, bring both arms over your head and extend your right leg away. The lower to the ground it is, the stronger it is. So have it higher up if that's better for you. Exhale, squeeze both knees in. Inhale, arms and left leg away. 
Exhale, back and squeeze. Inhale, arms and right leg away. Exhale, back and squeeze. Inhale, arms and left leg away. Exhale, back and squeeze. So continue like this, or if your core is already strong enough, you can do both legs together. Exhale, back and squeeze. You can mix and match, so you could do right leg, then left leg, then both legs. So whatever combination works for you. Remember, you can stop at any time. If you feel you've done enough before I've said to stop, please just stop. Relax with your knees to your chest. Keep the knees squeezed in this time. Bring your knees apart towards your shoulders, relaxing here. Nice, relaxed, comfortable breath. Check your shoulders are soft. And place your feet to the ground hip width apart, heels close in towards your buttocks. We're going to do bridge pose to really work the thighs and the buttocks. Arms alongside you, palms down. Make sure you have that gap between your feet. It's more intense than your back otherwise. So have that gap about hip width and heels close in towards your buttocks. We're going to inhale here, exhale round your spine, so peeling up lifting your spine as high as you comfortably can, hold as you inhale, and then exhale, round your spine. So we're trying to land vertebra by vertebra. Relax as you inhale, exhale, round the spine, peeling up into bridge, hold as you inhale, and exhale, round your spine as you lower back down. So repeating like this, you're breathing into where you are and then exhaling as you move either up or down. Now we'll stay lifted this time and I'm going to interlock your hands underneath you and then tuck your shoulders under one at a time if you can to give you more space to lift even higher. Hold here. Release your hands, gently lower down. Settle your shoulders. And then bring your feet together. Place your right foot on your left knee. Keep your hip nice and relaxed. And then we're going to bring the left thigh in towards us, hands through and around your left thigh. If your hands don't reach your thigh, you can wrap a scarf around your thigh and then hold the ends of the scarf here. If you're bendier and you can reach around your shin, Bring your hands around your shin. Wherever you are, it's all about being comfortable. Somewhere you can relax and breathe and let go. And then place your left foot down. Bring your right foot down and place your left foot on your right knee. Draw your right thigh in towards you, either use your scarf or hands around your thigh or hands around your shin.
Place your right foot down, left foot down. Relax both legs to the ground. Bring your arms over your head, point your toes and have a nice big stretch. Reaching your fingers to one wall behind you, toes to the wall in front of you. And push your heels away, keep stretching. And relax. Hug your knees into your chest, hands around as you rock with those lovely circles. And change direction. Stay at centre, each exhale, squeeze in, inhale, release a little. Stay squeezed in. Rolling onto your side, come up to sit. And we'll stretch the legs forward and relax the upper body downward here. So easing down to wherever you feel a comfortable stretch. Let your head drop. Slide your hands back in, coming up to sit. And then we'll come up to stand. So standing tall and straight, the front of your mat, feet together, toes and heels as much as they comfortably can. Crown of the head drawing up towards the sky, shoulders dropping down. As you inhale, take your arms out wide, reach them up to the sky, tilt your head back slightly to look up. Your hands are shoulder width apart, reaching fingers as high as they can. Next exhale, reach forwards and down, easing into your comfortable forward fold. So let your body settle and place your hands wherever they reach along your legs to the ground. And if they reach, then your heel of your hands are in line with the heel of your feet. Let your head drop completely. Nice deep breaths. And with your next inhale, take your right foot back a large step, place your knee down, point your right toes back, and we're sinking down into the right thigh. To watch out for here, the left knee mustn't overhang the left foot. So just check that. If it is, then creep the foot further forward. So your heel is under the back of your knee. Let your body sink down into your right thigh. Make sure your right foot's not sideways on, that you're flat on the top of your right foot. So the lower half of the body is sinking downward and the upper body is reaching forward, so lengthening through the chest, the front body. Chin is parallel to the ground. Your gaze is forward, although of course you can have your eyes closed. Okay. 
and then tuck your right toes under, lift your right knee, take your left foot back into plank position. So your body's in a straight line, feel how strong you are here, core engaged, make sure your head's not dropping or lifting up, it wants to be an extension of the spine. And then bring your knees down, leave your bottom up, we're bringing the chest down towards the space between the hands. It may well not reach, that's fine, just go to where you can. And then as we inhale, we're coming through to Cobra or Sphinx, so either onto your elbows or if you're comfortable, up onto your hands. Rolling the shoulders down and back, chest coming forward, face soft. So the legs and buttocks are relaxed here. Your hips and pubic bone are to the ground. The whole of the lower half of the body can relax. Lifting, opening through the front body. And then tuck your toes under, lift your knees first, and then your hips up and back into down dog. So we're sending the heels down towards the ground chest back towards the thighs, head down towards the ground. Nice deep breaths. And then look forward, we're gonna bring the right foot forward so inhale, right foot forward, it wants to end up between the hands. Now it may or well not reach that far, in which case bring it to wherever it goes. Bring your left knee down and then bring the foot forward. You can lift with using your hand, scooch the foot forward, whatever works for you. And then sinking down into your left thigh. Make sure your right knee is not overhanging your foot. If it is, then just widen the gap between your right foot and left knee. And then tuck your left toes under, bring the left foot forward, bringing your feet together and relaxing in your forward fold, head dropped, shoulders soft. With your inhale, stretch your arms forward, Reach up to the sky, lift and open. Exhale, arms wide and down. A couple of resting breaths here. Shoulders dropping. So that round, your right leg went back and then right leg came forward. This time, left leg will go back, left leg forward. So with your next inhale, arms wide, reach up to the sky, look up, lengthen as you breathe here. Next exhale, reach forward and then down, place your hands wherever they reach along your legs, the ground if they reach, then bring the heel of your hands in line with heel of your feet, head dropped. And with your next inhale, we'll take the left foot back, left knee down, and sinking down into your left thigh. Point your left toes back. Make sure your right knee is not overhanging the foot. If it is, then widen the gap from foot to knee. Let your body sink down. 
upper body lengthening, chin parallel to the ground. Tuck your left toes under, lift your left knee, exhale, take your right foot back into plank, body straight and strong. Bring your knees down, leave your bottom up as you arch the spine, bringing your chest down towards the space between your hands. Inhale, come through to Sphinx or Cobra, so on your elbows or hands. We keep rolling the shoulders back and down, away from your ears. And tuck your toes under, lift your knees, exhale back into downward dog. The heels towards the ground, chest back towards your thighs, crown of the head down towards the ground. Look forward, inhale, left foot forward. Place the foot down, right knee down. Point your right toes back. Let the body sink down. Keeping your chin parallel to the ground. Make sure your left knee is not overhanging your left foot. Exhale, back foot forward. Now relax in your forward fold. Inhale, reach your arms forward, stretch up to the sky. Exhale, arms wide and down. And just relax a few breaths. Good, well done. Standing tall and straight, shoulders relaxed. And then we'll do two more, this time moving with the breath. So one breath, one movement. So the first one, the right foot will go back and then the right foot will come forward. Next one, left foot back, left foot forward. Standing tall and straight. Inhale, reach your arms wide up to the sky. Exhale, forwards and down. Inhale, right foot back, knee down. Exhale, plank. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale, through to cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, right foot forwards, left knee down. Exhale, left foot forwards. Inhale, stretch forwards and up. Exhale, arms wide and down. Inhale, arms wide and up. Exhale, forwards and down. Inhale, left foot back, knee down. Exhale, plank. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left foot forwards. Exhale, right foot forwards. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, wide and down. Couple of breaths. Let your body settle. Good, well done. Okay, so we'll do one standing pose. So standing with your feet together, 
stand tall and straight, we do Utkatasana, intense pose or chair pose. So I'd like you to inhale, bring your arms wide over your head, palms together. Exhale, bend your knees, keeping the upper body upright, knees bent as low as you can. Some schools teach it where you come forward and go lower down, but my school teaches it where you keep the upper body upright, bending just as far as you can here. So we'll stay here, nice deep breath. Inhale, straighten your legs, reach fingers to the sky. Exhale, arms widen down. Good, well done. Okay, so we'll come to sit on our mat, legs stretch forward. So sitting with your legs stretch forward, shoulders relaxed. And then we'll bend our left knee and place it next to the right calf. So way down the leg and then bring your other foot to meet it. And we're going to circle the upper body around. So imagine that your chin is drawing circles as big as can be around your body. And then change direction. Stay at centre, relax your upper body forward, so easing down, take your time, let your shoulders be soft, easing to your comfortable stretch. Check your shoulders are relaxed, face soft, head completely dropped. And then lift your upper body, easing up. Relax your legs away. Let's give them a bit of a jiggle. And then circle your feet. And change direction. And relax. Now come to settle in Shavasana, relaxation is always important to have a few minutes Shavasana at the end of any practice. Then so coming to lay down on your back. Feet a little way apart. Let your toes drop out to the sides, right to the right, left to the left. Have your arms away from your body, palms facing up so you're staying open through the chest and the shoulders. Feel everything settling and releasing. It's being still, enjoying the quiet, letting your breath become more and more subtle. So gently coming back to your breath if your mind has wandered. Have a few nice deep breaths. Feel each one nourishing and sustaining you.
Gently rock your head from side to side. And wiggle your fingers and toes, your wrists and ankles. Bring your arms over your head, point your toes, have a nice big stretch. Flex your feet, keep stretching. And relax. Hug your knees into your chest, hands around as you rock, making circles. And change direction. Stay at centre, squeeze in and then roll onto your side. Easing up to sit. Lovely, well done. Thank you so much for joining. So keep remembering, nothing tastes as good as slim feels. Nothing tastes as good as slim feels. All right, so please do comment. I'd love to know how you're getting on and I look forward to our next session together. Thank you, namaste.